thank you for joining us today. As you can see, I'm not joined by anyone today. This is a special Tell Me More. Uh, it's going to be much briefer, uh, and we just we want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and hope that today is very, very restful. Uh, if you have not listened to this podcast before, I just want to say welcome. And on Tell Me More, uh, we seek to do the deep work of discipleship. Discipleship is a long journey. And often I have found it's the conversation surrounding different milestone events in my life, the conversation with friends, with family, with mentors uh, that have shaped me and formed me into a disciple of Jesus. And so today, um, over the, this week and next week, we're going to be finishing the Sermon on the Mount. And so today, I just want to look at, at one passage really briefly and tie it in to Thanksgiving for us. So the passage we're looking at today is Matthew chapter 7, specifically uh, verses 15 through 23. And it reads, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but bad tree a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Now, uh, we're going to get to the second part in just a moment, but I want to address the good fruit and the bad fruit first really briefly. Um, the core of this is that character overrides image. Substance overrides image every time. A glass can only spill what it contains. And who we are is what we give to other people. The depth of our character, its strengths, its weaknesses, its faults, and its successes are what we have to offer to the world. And oftentimes, uh, not in the, the spirit or heart of being false teachers or being um, evil or misrepresenting ourselves, but we often will cling to an image of ourselves or train people to see us in a certain light that is uh, incongruent with who we are on the inside. And the call of Jesus to you and to me is to do the deep work of changing ourselves from the inside out, of being changed by Jesus from the inside out, that we might bear good fruit. Because there is no uh, good, bad fruit comes from a bad root. Good fruit comes from a good root. And so if our fruit is going to change, we have to change ourselves from the roots. And really, we have to be changed by Jesus from the roots. Our ability to change ourselves on a profound and deep level only goes so far without the Holy Spirit. So in the spirit of that, I want to invite you today simply to make a list of 50 things you're grateful for. Maybe you're grateful for your mom, your dad, the way you were raised. Maybe you're grateful for your job. Maybe you're grateful for a wife or a child. Maybe you're grateful for a house. Maybe you're grateful for a car. Maybe you're grateful for a space you're in in life or a conversation you just had. But I just want you to think through the blessings in your life. Often we, I think, tend to view ourselves as the victim of life. And I, I don't think that that's uh, really congruent with the truth. I think that all of us are more blessed than uh, we would like to see. And we are also... Um, our struggles are often not as unique as we feel they are in the moment. So in this keeping with being people of substance over image, I just want to invite you today on this Thanksgiving um, to begin by cultivating gratitude in the garden of your own heart. And then the second thing, this is one of my um, favorite kind of cornerstone passages in scripture and this is Matthew 7, 21 through 23, and it reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? 
Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, evildoers. This passage strikes at the core of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Many of us, I think historically, especially in the last hundred years in this country in particular, uh, have practiced Christianity, but as we have seen so clearly on display in the last year and a half, um, there's something lacking in the discipleship of the American people. And the troubling part of this scripture to me is that God does not say to the people who are surprised they do not belong to him. He does not say, I never used you. What he says is, I never knew you. And that's the secret to a life of following Jesus. It's not about letting God use us for great and mighty things to uh, make ourselves feel important or significant. It is to know him and to be known by the creator of the universe. That is the heart of the Christian message. A life that knows the God of heaven and is surrendered to his will. And so in keeping with that today, I would invite you to reflect on the ways in which uh, being used by God has been more important to you than knowing God, or perhaps using God for your own benefit and own concerns has been more important than knowing God. I, um, I want to invite you today to make some time to be alone with the Lord, to be known by him and to know him. And if you need any help with that, discernment on what that might look like, I encourage you to reach out to us here at Life Church Livonia. But I just wanted to hop on uh, for a shortened Tell Me More and invite you to allow Jesus to grow gratitude in the garden of your soul that we might not live uh, a false image of who we really are, but that we would allow God to transform us from the very roots of our lives uh, that we might be new and we might be made new, and we might be good trees that bear good fruit. And that at the end of our days, we would not hear the Lord say to us, depart from me, because I never knew you. But instead, we would uh, come face to face with the God who we know and call friend. And that that would be a day of rejoicing. And unlike the false disciples in this passage, would not be a day of terror. So happy Thanksgiving. And join us as we at Life Church Livonia continue to know and be known by Jesus and be formed as a people of substance through which our lives bear good fruit. God bless and have a wonderful day.